Okay, welcome to this video. I'm going to talk to you today about a very simple application of centripetal force and uh, physics dealing with the speed at which your car loses contact going over a hill. Uh, this is actually a very important concept here, so uh, let's let's begin by defining our, our hill here. We're going to have a semicircle hill and there's going to be a car that's going to be going over that hill. And I'm going to fill that up with a solid fill, I don't know, uh, let's make it um, this color here. I'm going to clone another one, I'm going to put it over here. Okay. And there's a reason I'm doing this, because we're going to have Newton's second law, and we're going to actually have um, two free body diagrams, because I'm going to have a net force. So here's my car. Okay, so let's make this, what color should we make the car? Um, all color, fill effects, solid fill, uh, maybe that color. Okay, so here's my car. I'm gonna clone it. I'm gonna put it over here. So I have, it's a dual picture basically. These are gonna be the sum of the forces, and this is gonna be the net force. When you have a car, let's just say that there's motion. The car is going over the hill like this. I'm gonna go ahead and draw it like this. So the speed, I'm gonna draw the speed just with a, like a little half arrow. Uh, the speed is going this way. Okay, of the car. Actually, I drew like a vector, but it's the, it's the speed is going this way. The car is moving in this direction. Uh, we want to know the speed at which the car is going to lose contact with this surface. Okay, so when does that happen? Well, let's take a look at the forces that are involved here. So the first force we're going to have here typically is going to be gravity, and then sorry, the first one we're going to have here is going to be gravity, and the next one we're going to have is going to be the normal. So typically, when we're moving over the top of a hill, are these two forces equal, or is one of them greater? And the answer is, one of them is going to be greater, and that's going to be gravity, because as you get faster and faster over the hill, this normal force gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. So depending on how fast you're going, that normal force may completely disappear, and that's what's going to happen when you lose contact with the ground. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and have your net force over here, and we're going to talk about that. That's going to be the centripetal force. So in a normal situation, before you lose contact with the ground, you have the normal force here, and you have the force of gravity here, and then you have your centripetal force, your net force here, which is going to be mv squared over r. Okay, right like that. Now, as you get faster and faster and faster over this hill, what's going to happen is that normal is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually the normal completely disappears so when you're losing contact with the ground there's no normal force right there okay so what are we left with well we're just left with a very simple situation here where we have the force of gravity and that's going to equal the centripetal force and the reason I always draw two free body diagrams here is because Newton's second law is meant to be represented uh, pictorially Okay, so I'm going to write equals here. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces, okay, in the y direction is going to equal F net. Okay, and that's what this picture is. This is the net force picture. This is the sum of the forces. Okay, now my net force is down, so my positive direction is going to be down like this. Okay, I'm only dealing with that one direction here. And if I go down, here, I continue to write this, I'm going to say F sub G, my force of gravity, is going to equal force centripetal, which is my net force here, okay, right here. And if I go ahead and write out the variables, I'm going to have MG here, G, equals MV squared over R, okay, and I can set these equal. What's going to happen here, very simply, the masses are going to cancel out like that. And I can go ahead and I can solve for v squared. I can say, well, gr is going to equal v squared. I can switch that around to the symmetric property. I can say v squared equals rg. And then my speed is going to be v is the square root of rg. Now, that's a very profound little equation there because you're going to see that with all centripetal force applications that square root of rg is going to be constant in some way when we're dealing with a banked curve without friction it's the square root of rg times tangent of theta 
when we're dealing with a car going in a circle on the road and what speed can it go before it slips off with friction, it's going to be the square root of mu rg. But this is really the, the core of everything. This is where it all starts in determining the speed at which this car leaves the surface. Once again, the reason why we have no normal force is because it has left the ground, it's not in contact at that point. So at that point, we only have the force of gravity equaling mv squared over r. And we just set this up with a very simple application of Newton's second law. The sum of the forces, which is represented by this side, equals F net, which is represented by this side. And I set my positive axis down, and I said mg equals mv squared over r, gr equals v squared, v squared equals rg, and then v equals the square root of rg. All right, that's all I've got for you now. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon.